Now we'll discuss a chest X-ray showing antler sign in pulmonary venous hypertension. Along with it, it is also the X-ray is also having features of biatrial enlargement. Most often, these two together come in situations like severe mitral wall disease. So we'll be discussing all these findings in a chest X-ray. For a change, first we will see the picture of a stag with antlers. You can see the antlers here. So the shape of the upper lobe vessels in venous hypertension, pulmonary venous hypertension will be resembling the antlers of the stag. That's why the name antler sign has been given. These are the dilated upper lobe vessels in a person with pulmonary venous hypertension and this is known as the antler sign. Other names are inverted moustache sign, cephalization and redistribution. Redistribution because normally vascularity is more in the lower zones than in the upper zones due to the effect of gravity. But due to vasoconstriction when pulmonary venous hypertension develops, there is redistribution to the upper zones. That's what we are seeing here. And uh, in conventional old chest x-rays, there was a measurement which was being taken. Width of this vein vessel should be more than 3 mm, 3 mm or more. But now with miniature x-rays of different sizes coming through, you can't depend on the absolute measurement. You can see the pattern. And what are the other findings here? Look at the trachea. This is a more vertical right bronchus, more horizontal left bronchus. And this left bronchus has been elevated due to left atrial enlargement, causing widening of the carinal angle. This is the carinal angle which is widened, elevation of left bronchus. Then there is a prominence of left atrial appendage. This bulge is known as third Mughal sign. First Mughal is arctic knuckle. Second is the pulmonary artery when it is prominent. Here the pulmonary bay is obliterated but it has not bulged out. So pulmonary hypertension is there but not very severe probably. But right pulmonary artery, descending pulmonary artery is quite prominent. Indicating pulmonary hypertension, arterial hypertension. Then a left pulmonary artery is not clearly seen in here. It is usually retro within the cardiac shadow. And you can see the descending aortic shadow. So you know that left atrial appendage is the situation where most of the thrombi occur first. Then you expect a double atrial condor in this case because left atrium is enlarged by other findings. Left atrial appendage, widening of carinal angle and elevated left bronchus. But somehow the double atrial contour is not seen here. The contour seen here is the descending right descending pulmonary artery. What you are seeing is a prominent right atrial enlargement. That also indicates that probably there is pulmonary arterial hypertension. But it need not be. Right atrium can be enlarged even without pulmonary hypertension if there is severe tricuspid regurgitation. And severe tricuspid regurgitation in rheumatic valve heart disease can occur even without pulmonary hypertension because tricuspid valve may be involved in the rheumatic process and cause tri uh, right atrial enlargement. Another possibility is that there could be tricuspid stenosis also which can cause right atrial enlargement. So then uh, regarding the right atrial enlargement, usually the right atrial shadow will be only up to the just lateral border of the spine. So the extent here, in olden days we used to measure also 5 or 5.5 centimeters from the midline will be taken as right atrial enlargement. As I mentioned, now it is not applicable because often you get a miniature sized x-ray, not the old big x-rays. Then another factor which is considered is how many uh, intercostal spaces the right atrial contour is extending in the vertical position. You can see that three intercostal spaces are there. That is another cutoff for right atrial enlargement on chest x-ray. And still another finding which you look for is there is some haziness here 
which could be due to a dilated superior vena cava which can occur if the person is in right heart failure but it is not a very prominent shadow even in heart failure right heart failure that will not be a very prominent shadow and then you have to look closely for any evidence of mitral valve calcification this is the left atrial appendage so just below that will be the mitral valve you have to look for mitral valve calcification in this region it is not seen